If you have a fifth wheel or travel trailer with a seven pin trailer connector, did you know that you have a source of DC power right at the hitch? For example, we have power right here. So I built this adapter cable uh, so that we can access that DC power. And all you have to do is plug the adapter cable into the seven pin connector and you can see I've got power. I'm just tuck it up into here and then I just have a lighter adapter to go here and now I have a method of powering my sign. So in this video we're going to build that adapter. And to make the power connector we need to start out with a standard inexpensive RV plug and where I've marked here and here I've cut those off and you don't need to do that but if you do you'll end up with this. It's just a nice little shell and I don't know I guess it looks neater. And what you will end up with is removing the guts out of the plug and this is the connector. And I also made a circuit board and the reason I did is because I want to add an LED which means I need a resistor. But more importantly I want to put in a fuse because this is going right to the battery and I feel better having a fuse in it. And then what I'm doing with a lot of my projects lately is I'm going to put a TVS diode in it, which is a transient surge suppression diode, and this will help from voltage spikes. And if you don't want to add these components, you don't need the circuit board. You can just wire up everything straight to this. But if you want to build a circuit board, then on my website is a link to where I got it, and you can have them ordered for you. In order to build this, we have to remove this center pin. And we're not going to need a center pin anyway. And we can just take that off. And we no longer need this, so that can be discarded. And this is just a hex standoff. It's a half inch long. And it uses 440 hardware. And so one of the things I want to do is I want to goop this a little bit so that it kind of stays on. And you can use thread locker or whatever your favorite goop is. But I like using lip tall. And this replaces the uh, original one that was in there. And we just want to tighten it down tight like that. So for us to power anything from here, we need to use the black and the white terminals. And this is just a piece of bare wire, 18 gauge or so. And then go to the other side. And then we can just insert the disc in here. Paying attention to which side is black and which side is white. And then what I want to do is to put the screw into here. And then that gives us a nice mounting method. And the two wires that we need are sticking through like that. We're just going to solder these two wires here. And then we cut those off. And temporarily we're going to take this back off because I want to solder in the connector for the LED. And I'm using a connector rather than hard wiring the LED because that way, you know, you may have to take this board off every once in a while because it does have a fuse on it. And if you do blow the fuse, you may want to take and uh, replace the fuse. And since we don't have a whole lot of clearance, I do want to cut the ends of this connector off. Okay, so now we can mount this back on again. Going to put the screw on. And the next thing we want to do is put the current limiting resistor in for the LED. Unfortunately, we have to deal with some surface mount technology, which is really the only way that I could get these parts in here. And these can be a little fun sometimes, but we only have one real small one to deal with. So we'll solder that one in place. And next, we want to put our TVS diode on. Now this has a stripe on one end that wants to correspond with this arrow. So the stripe goes in the direction of the arrow. And again, with surface mount, uh, it's a little bit helpful if you use a little flux. And this is a no clean flux, so it means you don't have to clean the residue off. And this one actually is big enough that you can handle it with your fingers without needing a pair of tweezers. And 
And since we're using a TVS diode, I always like to have a fuse anyway. But again, as I said, this is connected directly to the battery. I just feel having a fuse is the prudent thing to do. This is actually a fuse holder. It's a pretty small one, but it's still a fuse holder. This is actually called a nano fuse. It's made by Little Fuse. And here's one of them. Believe it or not, that's a 5 amp fuse. And they're replaceable. So we have the fuse in here. Do we want to take the shell again? This is what's called a cable gland. This particular one's a PG11. And if you have some pliers, you might want to tighten this down. But a hand tight can probably do it. And I was able to finish the LED. It was just too hard for me to do the video while I did the LED, but we have the LED here on just piece of heat shrink over the leads and then just going to the connector and that connector will fit in there. And while you were away I drilled a hole for the LED and put that in and then put some Celastic inside of it and let it cure so that should hold the LED in place. And for the cable we have a couple options. Number one is we can use one of these power cables that have the 9.1 millimeter jacks on them and the other option is something like this heavy duty cigarette lighter and I think this is one I'm going to use because it has a little more utility than just this one. I don't want to ruin this whole cable so one trick is to cut it kind of close to one end and then you can save the rest of this for another project. And you also want to choose a cable that has the sufficient wire gauge uh, for the fuse you're going to use and this is 16 gauge so this is more than plenty. And to fit the cables to the end of the gland and make sure you put the nut on the end of it first. Solder both of these leads from the top. And the last thing we want to do before we button this up is we want to make sure you look through here that we're not touching anything. And so now we're just going to button her up and we just feed this back through here until we can get to the LED. And then we just want to put these screws in here that hold everything together. And these are the original screws. And then finally we just uh, run this gland back up here and tighten it down. This adapter cable is done. But wait, there's more. And if you go to an RV show, you'll see some dealers turn on the clearance and running lights on the coaches. And as well, I've seen some people at the campground do that too. I guess so they can find their camper at night. Uh, you still want to make the shell like this. And you want to get a switch similar to this. And this is a Hella H61923001 and has a little LED in it. And there are three terminals on the end. There are two silver plated terminals and one copper terminal. And the copper terminal is ground for the LED. So I've come up with three short connectors. We'll connect the brown one to the ground. And it doesn't matter which red goes to which. And this is the switched side. And with this particular switch, the center one is connected to the LED, and the outside one is not. So we want to connect this to the supply line, and we want to connect this to the load because we want this LED to come on only when the load comes on. So we're just going to mark it so that we can tell which one is which. And so this goes to the load. So it's just a matter of inserting the switch into the base. And then we will take the nut and tighten the nut down. And then we want to take our connector. And the connector is marked with the color code. This one is ground. So we want the ground to go on to the brown wire. And we don't have to worry about the ground for the taillight and 
clearance lights because it's already connected through the system. So this ground is only for the LED. So we have ground wire here, the battery here, and the taillights here. And then we will just reassemble this. And then we have the plug, and this will just plug into the trailer connector. And then when you turn the switch on, it's going to turn the clearance lights on because it's going to take the battery connection and hook it to the clearance lights connection on the seven-way trailer plug. So if you want to make this plug in addition, you can easily do so.